wonderful, exciting moments in our life to know our soon and coming king is coming very soon. Amen. Amen. And uh, we want uh, this morning go into worship. We would like to um, say a word of prayer. Father, we glorify and we exalt your name forever, for there is none like thee, O God. The name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, mighty indeed. We thank you, O God, for your son. We thank you, O God, for what he has done for us, dear Father, Lord Jesus, and what he is doing still in our lives, dear Father. We look forward, dear Lord, thy God, for his holy presence, dear Father, the Spirit of God that will rest, reign, and abide within us, dear Father, Lord Jesus, as we go forth this morning, dear Father, with your word, with your worship, with your songs, giving praise and honor and glory unto you, O God. We thank you for the song leader this morning, dear Father, Lord Jesus, that you would Bless him, O God, that you would, O God, hallelujah, he would sing unto the honor and glory of God. End of all, dear Father, my God, as your name be lifted up, you will be glorified. In Jesus' wonderful name. Amen. Brother Jonathan. Uh, Praise the name of the Lord. That's a good morning and greetings in Jesus' name. Amen. We are here to worship the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. So we just want to give him some praise this morning. I want to encourage you to worship along with us this morning. Hallelujah. My 
golden top. I want to see your kingdom come. My Redeemer is. 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 Oh yes, my Redeemer is.
am a child of God. You split the sea, yeah. you split the sea, so I can walk right through it. My fears are drowned in perfect love, my God. You rescued me and I would stand and sing. I am a child of God. You split the sea. You split the sea so I can walk aside. child of God. Yes, I am. I am a child of God. Yes, I am. I am. I am a child of God. I am a child of God. Yes, I am. I am a child of God. I'm no longer, I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am a child of God. I'm no longer, I'm no longer a slave to fear. My God, for I am a child of God. Light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Yes, we make a miracle work, a promise keep. Light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. So you are here, you are here, moving in our midst, my God. I worship you. You are here working in this place. I worship you. I worship you. You are here. You are here moving in our midst. God, we worship you. I worship you. Oh Lord, I worship. You 
His holy name, Father, we give you thanks, Lord, this morning that the God that we serve is all powerful and mighty. Oh, glory be to your name. We give God thanks for Brother Jonathan and his lovely wife for that worship and songs this morning. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Without further delay, I just want to bring greetings from our pastor, Pastor Gilda Hippolyte. As she is on her vacation, she will be back out with us next week, please God. And we have a guest speaker this morning, and I want to present uh, our listeners and people on WhatsApp, Zoom, and Facebook, our minister for this morning, in the person of Pastor 
Anthony Timson from the Malabar New Testament Church of God. Hallelujah. Praise some the Lord. Good morning. Are you hearing me? Good morning. I greet you in the holy and wonderful name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. It's a joy to be, let me say, back at bypass, um, not physically, all right, but I always do enjoy coming to the bypass New Testament Church of God. I greet the wonderful pastor and her husband, Pastor Gilda Hippolyte, and Brother Hippolyte, in the wonderful name of Jesus Christ. I give God thanks for this great opportunity he has given to me to be able to minister to the brethren at the bypass New Testament Church of God. I truly enjoy the worship done by Brother Jonathan and his wife, all right, so Christine, I give God thanks and praise for that time of praise and worship. Praise of the Lord. Um, without further ado, I want us to, if you have your Bibles, you can turn to Acts chapter 27. I just want to give you a, a short, I don't know that one. A short mess word this morning from the Lord, Acts chapter 27. And I'm going to read at this time from, let's say, verse 21. Okay, there's a few verses. And it reads as follows. But after long abstinence, Paul stood forth in the midst of them and said, Sirs, you should have hearkened unto me and not have loosed from Crete and to have gained this harm and loss. And now I exhort you to be of good cheer, for there shall be no loss of any man's life among you but of the ship. For there stood by me this night, the angel of the Lord, whose I am and whom I serve, saying, fear not, Paul. Thou must be brought before Caesar, and lo, God has given thee all them that sail with thee. Wherefore, sirs, be of good cheer, for I believe God, that it shall be even as it was told. I give God thanks for this portion of scripture, and we're going to look at this portion of scripture very quickly. Let's bow our hearts in prayer. Father, I give you glory, give you praise, give you honor and thanksgiving. Thanking you, Lord, for this great opportunity to be here in this service, my God. And as I minister your word, I pray to help me to be intelligible, to be clear, to be precise, my God, and to say just what you would have me to say to your people. Let it be a source of encouragement, a source to build up your people, Lord God, even at this time. I commit this message into your hands in just in my prayer. Amen. Amen. Okay, theme for my bigger theme for this message, I like to call it, I like to say confidence in life's storm. Confidence in life's storm. First of all, when you read this portion of scripture, you'll realize that Paul was a cap, a cap, a captive well, uh, being sailed to Rome. And the Bible tells us a storm um, came up while they were at sea. And of course, the, the brave fish, the brave sailors, they try their best to pre, uh, preserve themselves. They try their best to keep themselves alive. All right. But it was off to no um, avail. All right. We know that Paul himself was a child of God. Paul was a man on a mission. Paul was a man of faith and uh, he was in fellowship with God. And the first thing this, this portion of scripture tells us that storms in life do come up, all right? They do come up suddenly, all right? Sometimes we can look in the horizon and see what is coming, what is going to happen, and therefore we are able to prepare for it. We also see where Paul said, I warned you, and sometimes, you know, in God's uh, goodness and his kindness, he does give us that sort of warning and preparation. But the thing about it is that the storm came, and, and the next thing we can see from this portion of scripture is the fact that, all right, um, we all go through storms, and we know that for sure, both those who are saved and those who are unsaved. We cannot avoid that. You know, sometimes I'm always asked, why do bad things happen to good people? Because the idea is that once you serve the Lord and you're committed to the Lord, the, 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 the life's supposed to be as easy as possible. But the point remains is, according to the scripture, we all go through our difficulty, both saved and unsaved. But when we look at this portion of scripture, we see a difference in the response to the storm. The sailors are there um, stressed out. They are there trying their best to 
mitigate the effect of the storm. They are trying their best to ensure that their lives are saved, their cargo is saved, their ship is saved. And then suddenly this gentleman called Saul, or Paul, as you know him, he comes and he just calmly, he's calm, he's cool, he's confident, and he, he speaks to them, the boat is rocking, the winds are blowing, it's dark, all right? Very, uh, very dark and gloomy, and he is calm. And that's why I, I came up with the idea with confidence in life storm. What made Paul so calm, cool, and confident? Why could he have spoken so confidently? And therefore, this portion of scripture does show us a, crass, a contrasting reaction between the believer, because the Bible said he had abstained, all right? As I said, he's a man of God, he's a, on a mission, he's a man of faith, fellowship with God. And the contrasting reaction between a man of God, or let me say, a believer in God, and, and those who were not believers. Both are experiencing the, the same storm, the wind is hitting them almost the same way, they are being rocked the same way, everything is happening the same. But one person can come and say, hey, Relax yourself. Take it easy. Be cool. Take it cool. And, and you wonder why is it he was able to smile in this particular storm? And that's what I want to look at. At least I saw four things, and there may be more you can look at. And I want to share them with you because he is confident, and therefore I want to share them with you. Because I know we are all in, we all experience storms, especially this one that we are going through that is called the, the pandemic. All right, um, there are losses of jobs and different things are happening. All right, and uh, while we, uh, we, are, we, are, we will experience the effect of the storm, how we respond to it is very, very instructive, very, very important. And that's what I want to share with you with Paul. First of all, why, why was Paul so calm? First thing that Paul told them is found in verse 20, chapter 27, verse 23. For he said, For there stood by me this night the angel of the Lord. First thing, why we can be confident in our storm is because God stands with us. First thing we must understand, God stood with Paul. And why we as believers can be confident in the midst of our storm is that God stands with us. But Paul says, listen to me, for there stood by me this night, the angel of the Lord, whose I am and whom I serve. So God stood with Paul. I would like to let you all believers understand that when we are going through our crisis and going through our difficulty, God stands with us in the midst of our storm. He stands with us in the midst of our fire. He stands with us in the midst of whatever we are going through and we can be confident of our God standing with us. And how did God stand with Paul? Paul declared it, you know. Paul says this. First of all, he says, God stood with him through the presence of God. For he says, Paul, we know that Paul knew God. Therefore, Paul knew that he was not alone. And God revealed himself through this angel. So while all this was going on, right there, God revealed his presence. God revealed the Father that I'm with you through his, this angel. And the angel, of course, represented God. Here what the Bible says to us. In Hebrews 13, verse 5, the Bible says this. Let your conversation be without covet justice. And that's not the part I'm looking for. Be content with such things as we have. For he said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. Even in Joshua 1, 9, and we quote Joshua 1, 8, that talks about this book of the law shall not depart from you. But Joshua 1, 9 tells us also, have I not commanded thee? Be strong and of a good courage. Be not afraid. Neither be thou dismayed. Why? For the Lord thy God is with thee, whithersoever thou goest. The Bible says, Christ, the Bible says, the Lord said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. He said, Lo, I am with you always. And what does that mean? Whatever you say you're going through right now, God is with you. So God stood with Paul through his presence. God stood with Paul, glory be to God. Through his presence, hallelujah. God stood with Paul because of the fact that Paul 
belong to God because of the position of Paul. Not only because of the presence of God, but because also the position of Paul. You say, Pastor, what position Paul had? Notice what Paul said. Paul was assured of God being with him because of his position in Christ. Notice, this, notice that scripture verse says, an angel stood at me, whose I am. In other words, I belong to God. And because I belong to God, I know that God will take care of me. He said, the angel stood with me, who, the angel of God stood with me, whose I am. And listen to me, brethren, we belong to God. And because we belong to God, our position in God, our position in Christ, the term has determined that God will always be with us. So God stood with Paul in his presence. God stood with Paul because of Paul's position. And one last thing, glory be to God. In that context, God stood with Paul, glory be. Not only was God, Paul, he belonged to Paul, um, God, but also the Bible tells us Paul declared, I am a servant of God. And I must mention that also. So he said in that scripture verse, not only whose I am, whom I serve. So let me read that whole scripture for you. Verse 23 says, for there stood by me this angel, this night, sorry, the angel of the Lord. So God stood by me. Why did God stand by me? Whose I am, his position in Christ, and whom I serve. So therefore, his position in Christ means that he belonged to God, and also he was a servant of God. And not only that too, glory be to God. God stood by Paul because of his purpose in God. He stood by God because of his presence, because of his, pos his position in Christ, and because of his purpose in God. Notice what Paul says. Paul served the Lord, and the Bible tells us that Paul was a man on a mission. Glory be to God. And because Paul, God had a plan for Paul, God had a purpose for Paul, God said to Paul, listen, don't worry. You're going to reach where I want you to go. And therefore, brethren, first thing I want to leave with you is that whatever storm you're going through, God will stand with you or God stands with you. Why? He stands with you through his presence because he said he's not going to leave you. He stands with you because of your position in Christ. You are his servant. You belong to him. And he stands with you, glory be to God, because of your purpose in God. God, we all have a purpose, glory be to God. And God will always stand with us. Secondly, what confidence did Paul have? Because of not only the standing, God standing with him, but another purpose is that the divine promise that God gave him. Listen to me, brethren. God has given us his promise. Here what verse 24 says in Acts chapter 27. It says, saying. So the angel stood with him and he was saying something. He was giving him a promise. He's saying, fear not, Paul. Thou must be brought before Caesar. And lo. God has given thee all them that sail with thee. Why should we be confident in our storms? Because of God's divine promise. So therefore, Paul was admonished not to fear. God reminded Paul through his angel that he would, Paul himself would stand one day before Caesar. So in other words, Paul, I promise you that, listen to me, amidst all that you're seeing, the um, boisterous wind and the rocking of the boat and all that. Listen to me carefully. You are going to stand before Caesar. And therefore, God's plan must be fulfilled in our lives. God doesn't have to adjust this plan because of a storm. Just understand that. God doesn't have to adjust this plan because of our storm. I always remember Christ telling the disciples before he entered the boat, he said, let us go over to the other side. I appreciate many of you remember that story. He said, let us go over to the other side. And then after he, after he made that statement, they all went into the boat. He went down, the Bible says he fell asleep. And then this storm came, Bustra storm came. And everybody became frightened and scared. And of course, Christ got up and he rebuked the wind and he says, oh, you have little feet. I always wonder why, why oh, you have little feet? Because... Before they even left the shores, he made, he gave them a word. He gave them a promise. 
and the word was, we are going to reach the other side. He didn't have to tell you what is going to take place between leaving the land, the shores, and reaching the other side. He did not tell you what's going to happen, but he gave you a word. And that word says, regardless of what you see take place between leaving the shores and reaching the other side, regardless of what you see take place, we, we are going to reach the other side. Not I or one person, but you say, let us, us. And that's what we must understand that God promises must be fulfilled. Fill. And listen to me very carefully. God has made many promises. And I'll give some scriptures. God promised brighter days in Psalms 30. Verse 5 says, For his anger endured but a moment. His favor is life. Weeping may endure for a night. But listen to me tell you something. But joy cometh in the morning. It's going to happen. He has promised deliverance in Psalms 34, verse 19. It says, many are the afflictions of the righteous, but God delivered him out of them all. He has promised that everything will work together for your good. As found in Romans 8, 28, all things will work together for your good. And you can, you can hold fast to that regardless of good or bad. It's going to work together for your good. Praise of the Lord. Glory be to God. He has promised divine grace. And there are many, many promises. And what the Bible even tells us, that God is not slack concerning his promises. Mankind may say, I promise I will come, boy. Yeah, 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 come in, don't worry. And he don't show up. But when God talks, and when God makes a promise, it's a promise, you know. All right? And therefore, God promised so. I'm, you're seeing the boisterous wind. You're seeing the rocking of the ship. You're seeing the scared face, faces of the sailors. Listen to me carefully. Don't worry. You don't fear. You're going to get out of this. All right? So the second thing I want you to understand. What confidence you must have in your storm? The divine promises of God. That is the confidence I have in my storm. God promise that all will work together for good. So not only does God stand with us, but he promises. Thirdly, just cutting short, all right, his feet in God. Not, so God could promise, and we not God stand with us, but how do we respond is very important. Do you know what Paul says? Here what verse 25 says. So God stood with him, God promised. He says, where for sirs, be of good cheer, be happy. You could tell a man with all that storm taking place and things rocking so and what can they tell man to be happy then? He didn't tell him to be happy because things stopped rocking, you know. He tell him to be happy amidst the blowing of the wind and the boat rocking and you all know where this be and water splashing in and all kind of thing like that. And he said, listen, be happy. Why should you be happy? He say, for I believe God. You see that scripture? You, you see that in verse 25? So God stood with me. I'm his servant. I'm, I belong to him. He promised me that I will make it out of this because I'm going to reach by Caesar. So hear what, brethren? Sometimes that's where most of us reach. We reach at that point. But you see this next part? Paul confessed to the people, I believe God. I believe him. Not just believe in him, you know. But I believe, and as we, that you think, our, our, the word from God must be mixed with our feet. The Bible says, children of Israel did not enter the promised land because the word was not mixed with feet. So although Paul heard all this, he could still end up being scared, you know, but no. The reason why he settled, the reason why he could be happy, and the reason why I can tell you all, you all could be happy in the midst of this storm, or any other storm that you're going through is through your faith in God. But he says, I believe God that it shall be even as it was told me. So Paul says, I believe God. Paul's faith in God was another one of his confidence. He had faith. 
His faith anchored him. His faith was anchored on the plan that God had for him. In Jeremiah 29, 11, it says, For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, say the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected. Let me tell you something. God has, let me tell you, ask God to think about you. He think about peace, you know. He's thinking about a, 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 a good end. So our faith must be anchored on the plan of God. God has a great plan for us. Our faith must be anchored, glory be to God, and the provision of God or the providence of God. For Philippians 4, 9 says, but my God shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory. Our faith must be anchored on the plan of God. It must be anchored on the provision of God. It must be anchored on the power of God. What did Paul believe? Not only the plan, the provision, but the power of God. Matthew 9, 29 says this, but just beheld them and said unto them, Matthew 19, 26, sorry. Matthew 19, 26 says this, but Jesus beheld them and said unto them, with men, this is possible, but with God, all things are possible. Even 9, Mark 9, 23 says, Jesus said unto him, if thou canst believe, all things are possible possible to him that believe it and allow me to give one more scripture again in mark chapter 10 27 it says and jesus looking upon them said with men it is impossible but not with god for with god all things are possible his faith and one more aspect of that faith there are many others i can say the performance of god so let me go for what must our faith be anchored on? The plan of God, the providence of God, the power of God. God can do all things and the performance of God. And Jeremiah 1, 12, it says, then, then said the Lord unto me, thou hast well seen, for I, will his, for I will hasten my word to perform it. In Philippians 1, 6, the writer, it writes, being confident of this very thing, that he which has begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. He will perform it. And you ask him, so Pastor, what, what must I have faith in? Have faith in the plan of God for your life. Have faith in the provision of providence of God the power of God, have faith in the performance of God. Listen to me, God performs. Listen, we talk about governments and things of that sort. Listen to me, he has the power and he also performs. And if God said, Paul, you're going to reach Caesar, it's going to happen. If God say he's going to take care of you, he will take care of you. Everybody understand that? He will take care of you. He said he will deliver you. He will deliver you. God has a track record of performing. Not talk only. Don't, he don't talk. He performs. So Paul says, I believe God. God says so. So I believe God. So what should we do now? Be of good cheer. Be happy. It will happen. Miss all that you see. And finally, and as a teacher, I like to always reiterate so we could get it. Paul was confident in the storm. And why you should be confident? One, because God stands with you. Two, because of the divine promise of God. He has promised to take care of you. Three, because of your faith in God. Believe God. Paul says, I believe him. And four, why you should have confidence? In the time of your storm, because Paul, we must, we can have come once we abide in the will of God. We must remain in God's will, and God will take care of us. In verse 37, here what Paul says in verse 31, sorry, Acts 27, verse 31 says this Paul said to the centurion and to his soldiers, Except these abide in the ship, you cannot be saved. And that simply means this God told Paul where to be. All right, 
And therefore, the ship became the place where they ought to be. I'm going to tell brethren, don't jump ship. Stay in the faith. Stay in the will of God. That's where it's going to happen. Put that confidence. That as long as I remain in this ship, God talk about being in this ship. He says, stay. It's going to happen. I might think to all brethren, I know things are tough. I know things are difficult. I know we are going through some real wedding, some real storm. And you may say, Pastor, you don't understand. And truly, I agree. I may not understand. But Paul told these people, be of good cheer. But yeah, hear what? You have to remain in the ship. I know it's feeling tempting to come on. This thing will really happen. Well, let me jump and try to save my life. If I jump, but I might be able to save my own life. But Paul said, listen to me very carefully. Yeah? God stood with me. I know his promises. I believe it. Hear what? I have to stay in this ship. That's where God will have me to be. And listen to me carefully. In your storm, be confident that once you remain in the ship where God will have you to be, once you remain in the place where God is going to operate and God will have you to be, you can be assured of your safety in, in this storm. At this point in time, in, in this situation, the ship was the place of safety. But let me tell you something. Christ is our safety. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run in and they are safe. Glory be to God. Jesus Christ is our art of safety. Jesus Christ is our hiding place. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Jesus Christ is our safety. And therefore, be confident as long as you are in Christ and you remain in Christ. He's going to take you through your storm. You will weather this storm and reach where you, God will have you to reach. And because of that, Paul was confident. And I said like Paul to each and every one of you all who are watching me, be of good cheer. God stands with you. God has given his promises that we can um, lean on and stand on. Believe God. Have faith in God and his plan and his purpose. And listen to me. Remain in the faith. Remain in Christ. And I leave with you these words of confidence. So whatever you're going through, be confident in that storm. God will deliver you. You know, I was teaching on Daniel and I asked um, the body, glory be to God. You know, we talk about the, we talk about, um, the fiery furnace and uh, they stood for the Lord and we all know the story. And I say, where do we prefer to be? And I realized, and the question I was asking is that many people would like to have the miracle that took place in the fiery furnace, correct? I'm sure that's sort of dramatic deliverance, but, but in reality, people prefer they want that, but they like the Lord to deliver them before they reach the fiery furnace. Okay. But listen to me carefully. They, they want the, 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 the fiery furnace experience, you know, but they, they, they pray, God deliver me. I don't want to go in no fire. But let me tell you something. Sometimes in this storm, we see the miraculous working power of God. Amen? And where you are, just remain in the faith. Don't backslide. Don't go back. Stay in the faith. Let's bow our hearts and pray. And if you are going through some difficulties, I just want to pray for you that God's hand will be upon you and that these words will have been a blessing and a sort of encouragement for you to remain, that God will take you through and everything will work out. Father, I come before you in the holy and wonderful name of our risen Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. I thank you, dear God, that for what I've seen, oh Lord, we all go through storms, the righteous and the unrighteous. But Father, we, we can be confident in our storm. We can be of good cheer in our storm. The boisterous wind, the tempest wind could be blowing, Father. The ship could be rocking. It will seem as if the waves are coming in to the ship, the ship of our lives, my God. But we can still say, be of good cheer. We can be of good cheer. You know why? 
God, because we know you stand with us. You will never leave us nor forsake us. You know why, God? Because of your divine promises that says, glory be, whatever you say will take place, my God. Your word is ye, ye, glory be to God. And you are not slack concerning your promise. And you said many are the afflictions of the righteous, but God, you're going to deliver them give us from them all. You know why we can be confident and, and be happy in the storm glory? Because of our faith. I believe. We believe God. We believe your word. We hold fast to you. We stand on your word. And we know that once we are in the ship, once we are in the ship, in Christ, our hiding place, our security, our fortress, our, our everything, we know, glory be to God, we are safe in this storm. And I pray to touch every person, Lord, who are going through some difficulty, that they'll remember this for confidence, the area of confidence, and they'll hold fast to it and be of good cheer. Be happy because you are going to work things out for them. I ask God's blessing or continue blessing upon Pastor Gilda and her husband, her, their family, may the grace of God be upon them, keep them, strengthen them, bless their work, oh Lord, in this ministry, bless the bypass church, the bypass members, oh Lord, the leadership and all of the body, continue strengthen this body and continue to use them as you have done in a tremendous way. I commit this body into your hands, this church into your hands, this fellowship, oh God, into your hands and just in my prayer, amen. Praise, can we say praise the Lord? And be of good cheer. Amen. Be of good cheer. So Amen. you have to be happy, you know. Happy share means that you're, you're, you're yes. I go be happy because I know God is with me. Amen. God is standing with me. I'm standing in his word. God bless you, Brother Melvin. So nice to see you. And so nice to see all the brethren of the bypass church. God bless and keep you all. God bless you. Praise the Lord. Awesome. Bless the Lord. Thank you, Pastor Timson, for not just giving us the word, but, you know, the word that comes with faith and to be cheered up, especially in these times that we are living in. Amen. These crucial times, we can truly say, be of good courage, for God is with us. His word is yea and faithful to all that believe. Amen. Um, again, I say thank you very much, Pastor Timson. Um, we just want to say a word of prayer on behalf of our, our minister this morning. Father, we give you thanks, Lord, thy God, for this man of God. Hallelujah, Pastor Timson and his home, his wife, his children, his whole congregation, Lord Jesus, Father. We thank you, O oh God, for what you are doing in his life, dear Father, Lord, and the, the members of the Malabar New Testament Church of God. We thank you, O oh glory be to God, that this word that has been bring forth to your servant this morning, it's a timely word for the time that we are living in, Lord Jesus, Father. That we need to understand, dear Father, that all your promise, dear Father, we stand on it by faith. Glory be to God. And we pray a blessing upon each and every one, even the pastor this morning, dear Father. Strengthen him, dear Father, as he go through, dear Father, Lord, his ministry. Let it be, O oh God, fruitful and, and, and put, and, but, O oh God, hallelujah, your life within him, dear Father, Lord thy God, that his word, dear Father, your word, will go forth daily in his life, that he would able, dear Father, to grow, strengthen him, dear Father, Lord, even in his teaching, Lord thy God. Let all glory be to God, it be, dear Father, Lord thy God, that all that he have to say, dear Lord thy God, will be, oh glory, hallelujah, from you, Lord Jesus, to his students, to each and every one that you have come in contact with, dear Father, bless them in a mighty way in Jesus' name. We thank you this morning, dear Father, for the listening ears, dear Father. All, dear Father, who have tuned in to us, dear Lord, thy God, this morning. We are so thankful, dear Lord, thy God, and we trust that this word will bring forth, Father, fruit in each and every one's life, dear Father. That, oh, glory, hallelujah, that they need not to be afraid or fear 
of what's the time that we are living in and what's around us, dear Father, Lord Jesus. But we need, dear Father, my God, to fear you and live by your word, stand by your word, dear Father, Lord, this morning. We pray for those, dear Father, who are sick in body this morning. Touch and strengthen, Lord. Help them to call upon you, O oh, glory be to God. For your word, dear Father, my God, is life unto them, dear Father, Lord Jesus. Touch whoever, dear Father, my God, may be going through some sort of trial, some sort of tribulation this morning. May not, O oh God, hallelujah, able to have food on the table, Lord Jesus, but help them to put their trust in you, O oh, glory be to God. Help them to seek you and call upon your name, Father, Lord, I God. You said in your word, dear Father, that you would never leave us nor forsake us, dear Father. You said, dear Father, Lord, I God, that your word, dear Father, Lord, I God, if we eat and drink of your word, dear Father, we will never be hungry. We will never go to us, dear Father, Lord Jesus. We thank you this morning for your word. We thank you, Lord, I God, for your promise. And all your promise I yea unto us, dear Father. Glory be unto your name. Thank you, Lord, Father, my God, this morning. In Jesus' name. Amen. Bless the Lord. Glory and honor and praise unto thee. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. I just want to make a few announcements this morning before we close off. And we are situated at the Bypass New Testament Church of God on Church Street and in Arima. And we, our program continue this afternoon at 5 p.m. We have the discipleship program, which is known as Sunday School, all are invited. Sunday school is not just for the children, but for each and everyone. Amen. Then we have this. We have on Monday at 7:30, we have our Bible studies. And you know how Bible study goes. It is interested. This is the time that you can ask questions, you can, you know, be a part. It's not just listening, but being, oh God, put in your mind to, you know, the word and put in your heart into the word that whatever, you know, there are people, we have brethren who are qualified enough to answer questions that is put forward. Amen. Then we have on Wednesday morning. No, sorry. On Tuesday, this coming Tuesday at 7.30. The ladies' department will be taking over the service. We have one week on, one week off for the men and the women. Amen. And on Wednesday night, we have Bible, sorry, prayer meeting. Prayer, my apologies. Prayer meeting on Wednesday morning at 9 o'clock. So every Wednesday morning, you can tune into this link and we have people praying for you, praying whatever needs, whatever situation you may be going through. Feel free to be a part of this prayer meeting on Wednesday morning at nine. Um, on the Wednesday night, we have, as I said, on and off evangel evangelism, at 7.30, every Wednesday night at 7.30, evangelism. Then we have Thursday at 7.30, we have prayer meeting. It is important that we meet and we pray. Amen. It is important that we pray for a situation. We may have situation that is going on in the world today, situations that are wrong as God acknowledge our prayer. Amen. So we look forward again for a wonderful park weekend, park week to have you with us in our evangelism, in our, in our studies. Amen. God bless you all. And may I turn right back over to Sister Arlene. Bless her. Hallelujah. Oh,
people that are trying to achieve something.